Hi friends, welcome to Upa Studies YouTube channel. Uh, this is Fabric playlist. Uh, we are continuing with notebooks in Fabric in this video. So in our previous video, we have discussed about Apache Spark in Fabric. With this video, we will get like a like what is notebook, how it how it look like, and other basic things. In our next video, we will do a practical kind of a data load and then working some data transformations, etc. Okay. So this video focuses on the notebooks part in the Fabric. So what is this notebook actually and why these notebooks are required? So actually we have discussed Spark in our previous video, right? So as I said, Spark is an engine that, that is like a compute that help you for the big data processing, right? If you have a big data, to analyze the data, to process the data, you need Spark. So the way Spark will get used as a runtime to analyze the data is using a notebook. So notebook is an interactive way where you write a program or a language code you will write there and it will actually run on top of the Spark pools, which we have discussed even in our previous video. So we need to create a notebook. It's like a first point where we can start use the Spark for the big data processing or analysis. So where the notebooks will be available is, uh, if you go to the fabric, right? And uh, this is our workspace, Mahir workspace. And uh, here inside a workspace, you can hit the new, new item. And when you hit the new item, right? In the new item dialog, actually you can search for the notebook and you can create a notebook from here. You see the notebook here. So you can create a notebook from there. Okay. So, but before creating a notebook, right? So we can, we need some data on top of the data only. We can write some logic in a notebook to perform some analysis, right? So let's create one lake house first and get one data and further discuss. So let me hit this new item and let me search for a lake house first here. And uh, so I'm creating a lake host called sample lake host maybe. So our lake host got created and it got opened as well. So if I go to Mahir workspace once again, you can see our lake host here, right? Now, if I go to this sample lake host under files, let me create one folder, a subfolder called data. Okay. So I have one CSV file. I want to upload the file here. Okay. So I have a data folder here. So now, let me upload a sample CSV file from my local. So upload files option and then hit this browse button. Go to the downloads. There is products.csv file. So let me load this. So once the upload happens, I will show you how the data look like in this particular CSV file as well. Okay. So file got loaded successfully. And now if I go to the data folder, I see that product.csv file and I and when I open that file, you see, this is the data I have. Some sample product ID information. Around three products we have. That's it. A basic thing. So with this, so we have a lake host. We have a uh, data loaded there, a sample CSV file. So you see there is a new open notebook option. So you can hit that open no notebook option and select the new notebook to create a new notebook on top of this lake host. So let's wait for the notebook to get create and load here. You can see that notebook is getting loaded there. And now here, if you see here, the left side, the, the lake host from which we created a notebook, that lake host got selected already here. That is the reason it says one item. So I created this notebook from the sample lake house. So that's what it got selected there. Okay. So now in the notebook, right, basically you will have something like called cells. So everything like a one cell. You see here, whatever the highlighted one right now. So let me draw and see. So all this highlighted one, right, it is called one 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 cell similarly i can add one more cell here at the below and one more cell so we can continuously keep on add cells and write a code there and we can run that code now this is cells uh, basically can take markup language also or the code also so what i mean by that right so when i hit, when i hover here right you see code plus markdown right so let me select that code you see a, another cell got created and every cell will have this run button you can run this cell at a cell level. So each cell you can execute it or all the cells you can run. Okay. So when you hit run all, it will run all the cells at a time. I will practically show you that in a while. Now, if you see this cell, right? Any cell when you hover, when you select this M here, right? It will become a markdown cell. So when I do that, you see the text, whatever I written, it came like a markdown language, right? It came like a bold and a big thing, right? So why that is happening? Because now the cell became markdown one and you see now the icon changed to the code symbol. 
So when I click this code symbol now, the cell will become like a normal cell where you can write the code. But I have clicked that M symbol, so it became a markdown cell. So what the markdown cell means is when you double click here, you see you got a editor, a, a nice editor there to write a test with the different formats, maybe like a headers kind of a thing. So you want to create a notebook in such a way that where you have a headers explaining what the cells are running and then the actual cells where you have the code with the data processing logic. If you want to do all that kind of steps, you have to use these cells with markdown and code syntax. So now if I click this code icon once again, the cell will become like a normal cell where you can write the code and run using a spark. So let it be the first cell will be marked down. Let it be that. And in the second cell, right? So as I said, every cell will run using this run button. But for this demo, let's do one thing. Let's write some code and that will read the file that products.csv file, which I uploaded it, right? So before doing that, if I go back to my OneNote, and uh, there are, so when you write a code in in Spark, that means in notebooks, in Fabric, by default, PySpark is the language it got selected. But in the notebooks, you can write even Scala language code, Spark SQL, Spark R, all these languages can be work or it can be used to write the code in the notebooks. Okay, so not like only PySpark is the only way to write a code. No, even Scala, SQL, R language also we can use. What is PySpark means? It's basically a Python, Python language code only. So in Python, there are certain libraries that help to work with the Spark compute. So that library is put together. We generally call it like a PySpark or PySpark language, right? So ideally, Fabric by default chooses PySpark as the default language, but we can switch the languages using the magic command. So for example, now what I mean by that is, so if I, if I go back to my notebook you see here uh, here we have oh, let me open this you you see that the default language is the PySpark language selected so if i want to change that to i can change into the other language also scala sql r language it is very much possible but by default PySpark will be there so let's say now it is a PySpark, but here i want to write some code that should that is like a scala code then in that case you have to use a uh, Scala related magic command, which is a percentage percentage spark. So percentage percentage spark is a magic command to write the Scala code. So if you want to switch back to PySpark, then you can use this. For, so percentage percentage PySpark is the magic command to write the PySpark code. But I no need to write that magic command now because anyways, my notebook language is PySpark only. So I no need to worry about it. So this is one thing. Now, second thing is, Let's try to write a simple PySpark code for now uh, because the idea of this video is just to, to understand about what is notebook at a high level. Okay, so what I can do it is a sample code. I will copy paste from here where it will read the data from the products.csv file. So let me copy paste this line of code here and let me paste it here. So what is happening here is a PySpark code actually taking the products.csv file which I uploaded into the files and data folder the file format is a CSV and there is a header, there is a column, a head, column names row uh, as a first line. So that's what we are telling it. Now what this line of code will do, it will take the whole data and load it into this variable called DF, uh, which is nothing but like a data frame basically. So what is data frame now? In Spark, right, whenever you work with the data, uh, it will try to take the data in a structured way first and then it will do the processing. So when it takes the data into the structured way, uh, it will take it as a data frame. So data frame, imagine like a one table in a memory. Okay. So it's like a, you will have a table and the table have the rows and columns and everything. So imagine that way. So data frame is like a table within the memory. So whatever the data you have, be it maybe CSV file, parquet file, it will try to load the data into the table with the column names. So that means the data frame. Now on the top of the data frame, I can write my queries, maybe join query, select query, filter query, anything I can do, any kind of a transformation I can do on top of that. So, but the ideal way or the first step always will be take the data and load it into a structured way and the, the, the structured object which Spark generally uses is data frames. So data frame is nothing but like a, imagine like a table in the memory, okay? So now the data comes into the data frame. 
then let me use the display function to display the data frame. So now if I run this cell, it will actually read that products.csv file and present the data for us. So let me hit the run all button at the top to run this and observe the results how it comes. So the results will come in a tabular format. Okay, now you can see that it shown the data in a tabular format. It's a CSV file, but the data came in a tabular format. The reason is the CSV file data got loaded into the data frame and the data frame we are displaying it here and data frame is nothing but like a, a table in a memory. Imagine that way, right? It's a structured representation of the data in a tabular format. Okay, so that's it in this video. So I hope with this video you got an idea like what is uh, what is the data frame means and what is actually notebook means how the spark compute can be get used to perform the big data processing in fabric so i hope you got that sense in our upcoming video we will use the same notebooks and we will try to do a a different type of a transformations if the data has some schema how to take it without schema how to take it maybe performing some aggregations and partitioning the data so we will try to see all that kind of a data transformations logics in the notebooks using a PySpark in our upcoming videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.